everything you need to know about the White Cloak Cult in the Rings of Power. The Eye, the seventh episode of the Rings of Power, saw the show's mystery mystics reappearance. The three white cloaked individuals are on the hunt for the stranger. What are those nefarious individuals up to and exactly what do they want to do with the meteorite guy? The answers to these questions could reveal if Nori's giant buddy is actually nice or whether he is poised to endanger all of Middle-earth. These otherworldly individuals dressed in white cloaks appear to be chasing the stranger since we observed them inspecting the hole he caused after falling from the sky. So far, the individuals have only made an appearance very briefly, and it's unclear why they're chasing the stranger. We do, however, know their names according to the credits, The Nomad who is played by Edith Poor, The Ascetic played by Callie Cope, and The Dweller played by Britty Sison. After seeing Sison's character in one of the initial Rings of Power teasers, many assumed they were portraying Sauron in shapeshifter guise. According to another popular theory, the shrouded individuals are followers of the Cult of Melkor. It might not be surprising to know that Melkor is actually one of Morgoth's Monikers, and the cult is a sort of religious group dedicated to the villain's worship. After Morgoth was destroyed during the First Age, most of his followers went to Sauron and vowed their allegiance to him. Now before we go to our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Why are the White Cloaks tracking their strange comet man? It's reasonably probable that the White Cloaks belong to a Morgoth worshipping cult. During the Second Age, Sauron founded various evil churches loyal to his overthrown master, convincing countless men across Middle-earth to abandon the Valar. Sauron's perverted cults had a role in the devastation of Numenor. In the last episode, we've learned that there are many Morgoth followers in the Southland who saw the meteorite as a religious portent. So maybe the ascetic, the dweller, and the nomad are malevolent priests searching for their deity. Many people have hypothesized online that the dweller is truly Sauron. On paper, this seems reasonable. He's definitely the group's head, and we realize the comet is crucial to the evildoer's objectives. If the stranger is a Maya, as seems more plausible, Sauron would wish to encounter such a highly promising ally or opponent himself. We also learn that Sauron retains his shape-shifting abilities at this juncture in the chronology, allowing him to effortlessly contort his body to resemble an ordinary man. Quite obviously, there are several significant flaws in this idea. The first reason is that Sauron is not the kind to undertake things on his own. He is more of a conventional evil ruler who enjoys dispatching minions to accomplish his will. The second reason is that while the Dweller appeared to be in control, the others did not appear to be his minions. We believe they'd be more respectful to their alleged deity if he was genuinely Sauron. But it is quite obvious by now that Sauron is well on his way. During the Second Age of Middle-earth, he will shortly make the Rings of Power and wreak havoc. But who exactly in the series is Sauron, and precisely where is he these days? It's maybe the most pressing topic in the Rings of Power. While Halbrand appears to be the most likely candidate, he is not the only one. Not after a powerful man appeared in a meteor. If indeed a stranger is Sauron, it's clear why the White Cloaks are looking for their long-awaited lord, as well as why they bear the same constellation he does. But suppose the stranger, whom Nori thinks to be good, is the Maya Gandalf. You're not a para. You're good. In that case, actually, he is the single most significant threat to Sauron throughout the entirety of Middle-earth. This could also indicate why the White Cloaks are looking for him and share the same constellation as him. They recognize his entrance as a reaction to the arrival of their very own master, and indeed the mystics wish to remove him before he remembers his identity and why he has arrived. And since the stars are omens of impending evil in Middle-earth, they convey the same story to those who will battle Sauron, as they do to individuals who will fight beside him. When we learn which team the stranger is on, we'll definitely learn more about these white cloaks. Who are they and what do we know about them? Prime Video refers to the three individuals that initially arrived at the scene of the stranger's meteorite fall as mystics, and their dress undoubtedly lends to a religious ambience. We actually know where they're from, 
courtesy of one of the show's executive producers. According to Lindsay Weber of Time, the Dweller hails from the Far East, especially the Kingdoms of Rune, a location in J.R.R. Tolkien's darkest history. After the stranger arrived, the White Cloak's silent, ghostly figures appeared. Some, like Waldrig, saw the meteor as an omen that Sauron himself had returned. The articles of the mystic could tie them to a number of people. They are carrying a shield with the same constellation as the stranger is looking for. In Middle-earth, constellations can be used to predict impending evil. They also have a staff that resembles the Eye of Sauron, as shown in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings film series. They've also tracked the stranger's travels throughout Middle-earth. The Dweller examined the soil in which the stranger had been when they located his crash site. That eventually took them to the plant that the stranger had repaired at the Harfoot's new house. When Dweller touched it, they knew precisely where the bearded man had gone, and Nori's attempts to lure them away were futile. While we don't know what or who they are, or what they desire, it's evident they're malevolent. The stranger employed magic to cure the new land of the Harfoots. The Dweller used black magic to destroy the Harfoot's carts, thereby leaving the group without food or shelter. The Rings of Power is adapted from J.R.R. Tolkien's Second Age on Middle-Earth. We don't know what future alterations the show will make because it is compressing the narrative by several thousand years and introducing its own history to Middle-Earth. But according to Tolkien's canonical history, Sauron contributes to Numenar's destruction by influencing the inhabitants of the island to idolize Morgoth instead of the Valar. And Sauron himself was the supreme priest of Morgoth's worship. The author also had intentions for a narrative set during the Fourth Age of Middle-earth, which would have featured the new Shadow Cult, a set of individuals who revered the first Dark Lord. It's probable that the Rings of Power is drawing from both of these inspirations to present a religious sect that eagerly awaited the arrival of Sauron, Morgoth's successor. But where the White Cloaks originate from reveals to us what role they will play in the future. Whether they will be Maiar or human, priest or soldier, men pledged loyalty to Morgoth in places other than the Southlands. The Easterlings, the Dark Lord's most devoted followers, arrived from Rune towards the east. During the Third Age, the Easterlings will continue to serve Sauron. They will oppose Aragorn when he comes to the gates of Mordor. The White Cloaks are likewise from Rune, where they were appear to have left only after witnessing the stranger's meteor land on Middle-earth. All of this begs the question, are the White Cloaks searching for the stranger because he represents Sauron or simply because the stranger poses a threat to their master? We will soon find out. Could they be the human skin changers? Massive wolves have been hunting the Harfoots since the very first episode of The Rings of Power. In episode 7, Poppy noticed another giant wolf's paw print in the dirt near the White Cloaks. When Nori faced the gang, they disappeared into thin air before reappearing behind her. All of these suggest that they, like Bjorn from The Hobbit, are skin changers. Given that Sauron is a shapeshifter, it's feasible that his most fervent followers will have the same power, especially ones who appear to be sorcerers as the White Cloaks appear to be. The Dweller was not only resistant to fire, but she breathed on the embers in her palm, causing the Harfoot's carriages to catch fire. She seemed to have the deadly power of enormous fire control. Sauron already has a solid and enduring bond with wolves. Morgoth imbued the first werewolf with an evil essence and bred it from a wolf. Sauron was the beast's master at the time as he would be for all subsequent werewolves. Galadriel's brother, Finrod, was slain by one of his werewolves. Sauron himself changed into a werewolf in at least one instance, and they will continue to serve him well into the Third Age, much after the Rings of Power have been destroyed. Although the race of men could be both skin changers as well as dark sorcerers, it is possible that the White Cloaks like Sauron and Middle-earth's wizards are Maiar as well. Those Valar spirit slaves are very strong, and the one was Sauron's devoted vampire servant in the First Age. The Dweller's ability to manipulate fire is comparable to that of the Stranger. Does this strengthen a different Sauron theory? Despite the fact that the Dweller is the team's leader, there is no master-servant connection, as there might be if the figure was Sauron. The trio of anonymous-sounding identities revealed by the Rings of Power's Episode 5 credits also allude to the Dweller, Nomad, and Ascetic working for a greater villain rather than any of them being that main villain. 
However, the White Cloaks and Rings of Power suggest an alternative Sauron scenario. Meteor Man is undoubtedly the most compelling Sauron contender in the Rings of Power. This stranger who is now wandering across Middle-earth with a cluster of Harfoots is a supernatural entity with no memory of where he came from. When the Rings of Power Episode 5 introduces the White Cloaks, they're gathering around the crater Meteor Man caused upon landing, implying that they're looking for whoever fell from the sky. If the Dweller, Nomad, and Ascetic are devoted to Morgoth and Sauron and are now on the quest for Meteor Man, the Rings of Power's hulking honorary Harfoot becomes significantly more probable to represent Sauron. Meteor Man's entrance was described as a preordained, predicted occurrence in both Sadok Burrow's Giant Book of Wisdom and Waldreg's rants to Theo, with Waldreg even saying the falling star heralded Sauron's arrival on Middle-earth. The Rings of Power's White Robe 3 may have been the ones who made the judgment in the first instance, or they just heard the same narrative as everyone else. In any case, the presence of a triad of cult-like characters on the hunt for Meteor Man will further fuel conjecture that Nori's hairy pal was once Morgoth's greatest henchman. Conclusion Not much more can be said or predicted about the White Cloak cult from Prime Video's Rings of Power, as their origins and motives are mostly cloaked in an air of enigma. We can only imagine and theorize about what's going to happen next and hope that we're right. So far, the Rings of Power has definitely been pretty unique in the way it deals with Tolkien's lore and works, and there have been a lot of new additions made to the tale. Soon enough, we will discover the cult's true motives and what they really stand for in the upcoming episodes. But until then, it will be fun to speculate. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.